The pain never stops. If you think that the empty shelves we're seeing are quite distressing and the food prices are extremely expensive right now, just wait until the winter begins. The food crisis that's unfolding before our eyes is getting worse by the day. Global food supplies were already tight in the past few years, but the food that wasn't produced in 2022 means that we're going to be hit by even harder challenges in the next few months. At this point, worldwide fertilizer prices have quadrupled. Several countries started banning exports of essential commodities. Tens of millions of chickens and turkeys have disappeared from the system. Our domestic beef cattle herd has dramatically shrunk. And crazy weather patterns have resulted in the destruction of millions of acres of crops all over the planet. This is a confluence of many disasters hitting our food supply chains all at once. And the most worrying part is that experts say we haven't seen the worst of it yet. This winter is going to be exceedingly difficult for all of us. In this video, we've compiled signs that show us just how bad things are about to get. But before checking this list, please support our work with a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Without further ado, here are 20 signs that food shortages will get a lot worse as we head into the dark winter. 1. The largest fertilizer company on the entire planet, Canada-based Nutrient Limited, is warning that fertilizer shortages could last for at least a couple of years. The company has absorbed a large share of the global demand for fertilizers after a, the bulk of the world's supply has been taken offline due to the invasion of Ukraine by Russia. This has sparked soaring prices and shortages of crop nutrients in top growing areas worldwide, an early indication that the global food crisis will continue to intensify in the years ahead, Bloomberg reports. The company's CEO, Ken Seitz, said he expects disruptions to last well beyond 2023. Maybe it will be a two-year problem, and even then, it'll take two to four years after that for the deficit to catch up, added Jocko Rourke, the CEO of a top fertilizer company in the U.S. called Mosaic. Two, this planting season, the World Fertilizer Price Index has skyrocketed to observed heights that have never been seen before. Fertilizers made from nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium suffered a 400% price increase compared to 2020 levels, which is driving up food prices and worse, threatening food security around the globe, according to data compiled by the International Food Policy Research Institute. We're in a dire situation right now, said Svein Torderholzetter, the CEO of fertilizer maker Yara International. If farmers use less fertilizer, they can't produce as many crops, and that raises the specter of malnutrition, political unrest, and ultimately, the otherwise avoidable loss of human life, he noted. Three, due to the most expensive prices for fertilizer ever recorded, Millions of commercial farmers worldwide are reducing fertilizer usage and expecting smaller crops. SLC Agricola SA, one of Brazil's largest farming operations, managing fields of soybeans, corn, and cotton fields in an area larger than the state of Delaware, will reduce the use of fertilizer by 25%. Coffee farmers in Brazil Nicaragua, Guatemala, and Costa Rica, some of the largest coffee-producing countries, used 20% less fertilizer this year, and according to the International Fertilizer Development Center, this means global coffee output could slip 40% next year, while yields of rice and corn could shrink by 15%, equating to about 36 million tons of rice, or enough food to feed half a billion people. Meanwhile, China, the country that supplies 24% of the world's phosphates, 13% of nitrogen, 2% potash, halted fertilizer exports during this year's planting season. The country also banned exports of wheat and rice, steel and other raw materials, making 
global supplies even tighter. 5. At this point, it's being reported that global grain reserves have been drained. The chief executive officer of CF Industries Holdings, Tony Will, highlighted in a recent interview that global grain stocks remain extremely low, and we think it will take at least two to three years to replenish these stocks again. 6. The Ukraine crisis means that important agricultural exports produced in the country have been completely paralyzed. Key grains for the global food supply chain are still stuck in Ukraine and unable to leave the country due to transportation challenges and blocked ports, a UN food agency official said. It's an almost grotesque situation we see at the moment in Ukraine with nearly 25 million tons of grain that could be exported, but that cannot leave the country simply because of lack of infrastructure, the blockade of the ports, stressed Josef Schmidhuber, FAO Deputy Director of the Markets and Trade Division. 7. On top of that, at least 33% of farmland in Ukraine wasn't cultivated this spring because of the ongoing conflict. This will undoubtedly impact harvest yields in 2023. Over the years, Ukraine has earned the nickname Red Basket of Europe for its rich, dark soil, vast wheat fields and other farm goods. The escalating crisis invasion has cut off the world from cheap and abundant farm goods. The country accounts for more than a quarter of global wheat trade, about a fifth of corn, and 12% of all calories traded globally. 8. At the same time, in Canada, almost 2 million chickens and turkeys have already been lost due to the ongoing bird flu pandemic. Authorities say that this year's strain is unprecedented in terms of its global impact. It is highly transmissible and appears to be sustaining itself within wild bird populations, according to the CFIA. 9. Even worse, in the United States, more than 40 million chickens and turkeys have already been wiped out due to the outbreak of avian influenza, according to data provided by USDA's Animal and Plant Health Inspection Service, which also confirmed the detection of bird flu in 372 commercial and backyard flocks in 42 states. 10. Consequently, chicken prices rose 20.1% so far this year, Egg prices have shot up 41%. Turkey prices have seen a shocking increase of 112% compared to a year ago, about 14% above the previous record from 2015, the American Farm Bureau said. 11. Some of the largest water reservoirs in California, Shasta Lake and Lake Oroville, which are critical for local agricultural production, have both fallen to critically low levels. Years of low rainfall and snowpack and the most intensive heat waves ever recorded have fed directly to the state's multi-year, unrelenting drought conditions, rapidly draining statewide reservoirs. We anticipate that in the Sacramento Valley alone, over 350,000 acres of farmland will be fallowed, warns Mary Lee Connect Public Affairs Officer for the Bureau's California Great Basin Region. Twelve. For this reason, 50% of California farmers are saying that their crops have been severely hurt this year, and about 37% of U.S. farmers also say the same, nearly double the number from last year, according to a poll conducted by CNN. Some would consider this a wake-up call. I disagree, Wade Crowfoot, California Secretary for Natural Resources, told CNN. The alarm's already gone off. 13. A new study conducted by the World Preservation Foundation found that 65% of the world's lakes are seeing a reduction in water levels, hitting animals, farming, and electricity production, and impacting the livelihoods of 3 billion people. 14. This year, wildfires continued to devastate agricultural land all across the western half of the United States. The biggest wildfire in history happened in New Mexico in July, destroying 20 square kilometers of farmland under cultivation overnight, an area more than twice as large as the city of Philadelphia. 
15. Our allies in Europe are also facing devastating losses in food production. For example, Spain is expected to produce its lowest volume of fruit in the last 40 years due to extreme weather. Practically 100% of the peach crop has been destroyed, affecting millions of kilos of fruit. Antonio Moreno of the Agricultural Union, UPA, told La Verde. 16. In the UK, harvests of crops including onions, sugar beet, apples and hops are forecast to fall by 45%, according to reports from the UK's Environmental Agency. As much as half of this summer's potato crop is set to fail as well, the agency says. 17. In Italy, Coldiretti, the country's largest agricultural union, has warned that the drought is threatening 40% of the national seasonal harvest. Italy has experienced an unusual and prolonged heat wave and little rain this summer. Experts say it's the worst drought in 70 years in the country. The government's been forced to declare a state of emergency in five northern regions until the end of this year to deal with the situation. 18. U.S. supermarket CEOs have been telling the public to brace for higher meat prices in the months ahead. Tyson Foods, America's largest meat producer, attributes the coming price hikes to higher demand for meat, as well as increased labor and fuel costs, combined with the rise in the price of grains fed to farmed animals. 19. Even more worrying, online meat delivery company Good Ranchers is warning consumers that a meat recession is knocking and supply is about to be tighter as the nation's cattle herd continues to shrink. The cattle herd has shrunk due to droughts, Good Ranchers wrote. Our total meat supply for the coming year is down significantly. This is one of the main reasons a meat recession is coming. On top of that, breeders are also culling more unbred female cattle at a faster pace which effectively reduces the supply of future animals for slaughter, according to the company. Those future breeding animals have been liquidated, it said. 20. We haven't even seen the worst of food shortages and price increases yet, but America's food banks are already reaching a breaking point. All over the country, food banks are struggling to keep up with the increased demand they're experiencing. Feeding America, one of the nation's largest charities with over 200 food banks, 60,000 food pantries, reported 85% of their food banks saw increased demand for food assistance. Their president and chief operating officer Katie Fitzgerald says the organization is already dipping into emergency reserves, switching to cheaper products, limiting how often people can visit or how much food they can get, and stretching their inventory to be able to meet more people's needs. Our experience is that this rise in food and fuel costs are creating just as precarious a situation for people who are trying to feed their families as was the case during the pandemic. Inflation is devastating to the budgets of families, seniors, and people just barely getting by, driving more and more of them to food banks and to food pantries, Fitzgerald says. The problem we're seeing is that food banks are not immune to these inflationary pressures. So while they're dealing with longer lines at distributions, they face soaring costs and other challenges to their operations, she added. A Feeding America survey found that inflation and supply chain issues are greatly affecting food banks, with 70% of their members reporting donations of food have decreased, while operating costs have risen 95%. While rich countries will continue to face shortages and higher food prices, in more vulnerable countries, people are going to get desperate. Fields are not being planted, emphasized Theo Diego, the president of the World Farmers Organization. I'm not so sure it's possible to avoid a food crisis. Farmers need peace, Diego said. Warning signs are starting to appear everywhere. Are you seeing them? Pay close attention to the events that are developing around us, because this crisis is only going to accelerate as the months roll along.